Good morning, and welcome to Father Son Chats with me and my son Ren here. Hello, Mama. Mama is not part of Father Son Chats. Mama sleeps in when we do Father Son Chats. The morning show for those who love mornings, chats, fathers and sons, and the relationship between the two. Uh, today we're going to talk about morning. games. And hey, the I'm talking to you. But you can't interrupt. I'm talking to the camera. Uh, to all the viewers across the land who are here with us this morning, watching us chat, father and son. <laughs> so, son, I thought it'd be great today to talk about the gaming culture and its relationship with the different sorts of games, and kind of maybe take that subject and pull back a little bit and examine. Um, I don't want to say maybe snobbery or uh, gaming discrimination. Okay, so first I should start off by saying we all discriminate in our lives. I discriminate uh, based on how people dress. For example, if I see someone in a polo shirt, I, I experience revulsion. But as I've grown older, I've come to realize that that is just a, a generality. I, I take that social signal of wearing a polo shirt and think, oh, that's something that's not for me. I've experienced it in the past many times that the polo shirt has not been for me, and so I avoid it. However, that does not mean everyone who wears a polo shirt is going to be someone I don't enjoy interacting with. It's just that I've had that experience in the past, so it's a cue, it's a clue. Let's shift that to games. There are different types of games, aren't there, son? Uh -huh. There are, the, the, the main types people like to talk about are Euro, American style thematic games, war games, popcorn games, and social games, role playing games, story games, and they all have different um, kind of constituencies, different cultures that tend to pl like to play those games, but not games that are in other camps. So those games start to, to take on uh, certain clothing, so cubes versus wacky cards versus plastic versus cardboard and people who are going to invest their time in their selves because anything you do is an investment of some fraction of your life people who are going to do that <laughs> might be like I don't want to invest in that because I see these cubes and I see that these are not necessarily for me um, and I think what that leads to is um, a sort of cultural monogamy where the ideas kind of stay stagnant and maybe just build in particular lines. There's less um, interbreeding, less mixed <laughs> mixture of the streams, right? But I also think that there are uh, oftentimes people out there in polo shirts who aren't, who are maybe an atypical example of a person in a polo shirt. Or if you just get to know people in polo shirts, I think they have a lot to offer. Right? And so I have a tendency, I think people have a, have, um, a tendency either towards <coughs> cultural monogamy or cultural polygamy um, or polyamory, cultural polyamory. I'm more of a cultural polyamorist. I like to um, interbreed and mix ideas. Uh, politically, in the United States, I would say the, the right wing tends to be more towards cultural monogamy and the left wing is more to, towards cultural uh, polyamory, uh, a lot more mixture, a lot more, right? And I, I think a lot of political divisions in the United States actually are between those two, two, uh, two opposing cultural streams. Don't you? Or do you disagree? Do you have something to say about that? Seems like you want to say something. But the political fights are really cultural fights that have kind of political hooks. So if you want to, you got to giggle when I'm not talking, not when I'm talking. It seems like you're just trying to giggle when I talk. There, that was good. I wasn't talking. So what I'll do is I'll pause occasionally and then you can giggle for the people at home. Um, you're, you're <laughs> it up and I bore you to tears um, on father-son talks in the morning. Uh, so 
Yeah, so uh, politically, I'd, I'd say most most political groups are actually more <laughs> cultural groups that have these political hooks in them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I really want you to stop doing that. Okay? Um, it's very difficult to talk with so much color. So maybe I'm a cultural homogenous. I just really want monogamous. I just really want my... I don't want to mix my idea with his idea, which is the show should just be him laughing with cereal in his mouth. Um, and I, I don't think there's, there's one right answer, right? You want to have... Um, like, good ideas should stay. They shouldn't have to be blended away, but then you have to make the judgment call as to what's a good idea. I think where you get in danger is if you go to the extremes and you think always it should be this one idea. Um, or you think always ideas should be diffuse, right? You want to be able to, to have something coherent, but that is also flexible. And it's like I take the, the same cues with the polo shirts with games. So like if I see cubes, I experience a revulsion as well, or I like, I'm like, okay, I'm, a, I'm wary going in. But what I do, rather than just say no, is I maybe learn, I, I spend some time and learn more about it. I uh, recently have played a couple games with cubes. Three, I'm going to talk about three that I've enjoyed with cubes. Um, I played Courtier, which is cubes. Um, part of what helped me come to that game is uh, a gaming friend and a friend of mine who I respect uh, brought that to my attention. That's one way that, that um, people can get outside of the cultural bubble is just through interpersonal relationships, um, which is why people, uh, some people believe like gay marriage is now le becoming more accepted and legalized in these United States because people are starting to meet gay people and they realize that they are humans. Um, so same thing with these cubes. <laughs> Being gay is using wooden cubes. Um, so that was one game. Another one uh, is Archipelago, which it was kind of a similar situation. Uh, I, that one had a lot of things that I thought I wouldn't like, but there was enough, I, you know, that was a case where I just learned more about the game, and I was like, okay, there are some elements I can really dig here. Uh, the secret victory conditions, the, um, the semi-cooperative nature. Semi-cooperative is a bell ringer for me, and something I, I always try games that has that, because I don't think, I think all games should be semi-cooperative, <laughs> which is cultural monogamy. Um, and then also the coin series. I think the people from the war gaming camp are maybe... We can, yeah, we're going to stop and finish this cereal. Alright, thanks for your time. That's all the time we have here for father and son chats in the morning with Red. Father and son chats. Yeah, this is our new show that we're doing in the morning. <laughs> Ow! Oh, yeah, my funny mom. <laughs> <laughs> Ready for a bath? Yeah. I already took a bath. Your turn. No, your turn. Oh. No, your turn. No, your turn. I'm <laughs> sorry.